The answer is a plugin for DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, or Final Cut Pro that allows you to stylize your videos so that they look like they were shot on film. I've been playing around with the Hansa for the last couple of weeks to see what I could create, and honestly, I'm pretty impressed. In this video, I'm going to cover the features of the Hansa, specifically for the DaVinci Resolve version of the plugin, and also share my thoughts about its practical use for content creators and videographers. I'm not going to cover every single feature because it's quite an extensive plugin, so I'm going to focus on the main features that I think creators will make use of. To make sure I'm being completely transparent, I just wanted to let you guys know that the Dehancer team did reach out to me to let me try out this plugin, but no money changed hands and they've given me the freedom to give my honest thoughts about Dehancer. So I'm going to be completely open about what I like and what I don't like about this plugin. So let's start off by talking about and showing you the main features of Dehancer and how they can affect your footage. First of all, Dehancer offers a wide variety of different film profiles that emulate popular film stocks. I honestly can't comment on the accuracy of these film profiles when compared to the original film stocks because I've never actually shot on film before. But what I can say is they can provide a really interesting variety of looks with very little work. I particularly like the Fujichrome Provia 100F and the experimental Prokodin Gorski 1906 profiles as these boost the saturation in the reds, giving skin tones a really nice look and also giving more of a warmer feel to any scene. Film compression compresses the data in your image, making the colours, the highlights and the shadows pop a little bit less. This effectively gives you that less contrasty and slightly faded look that you often get with film and it can look really good. Film grain is exactly what you'd expect. It adds film grain into your footage. And I actually honestly really like the look of this, especially if that's the look that you're going for. The hands are claiming the reason their film grain effect looks so good is because it's not simply overlaid onto the image, but instead the whole image is actually reconstructed to include that film grain. This feature allows you to change the size, the amount, the resolution, and the effect on the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So it's really quite comprehensive. Halation is a feature that allows you to add reddish orange halos around bright light sources and contrasting edges. I'm not sure I particularly like this effect, but I guess it's good to have if you are going for that full film emulation look. Bloom is one of my favorite features of this entire plugin. It basically adds a layer of diffusion around bright lights, and it looks particularly excellent on things like neon signs or brightly colored light sources. Fundamentally, it gives your video a beautiful, dreamy quality, which can look fantastic if used correctly. Vignette is usually considered a flaw in lens design that can result in either lower or higher exposure around the corners of an image when compared to the center of the image. However, it can often look quite good if you use it to intentionally draw the viewer's eye to the subject of the scene. Film breath is quite subtle unless you turn the effect of this up to the maximum. This feature emulates the accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame that can be caused by things like inconsistencies in the chemical makeup of the film or instability in the camera shutter. I'm personally not a huge fan of this, but I guess it's again nice to have if you're looking for that full filmic look. Finally, gate weave emulates the swinging or movement of a film strip as it's pulled through the frame window of a film camera or projector. And basically this means that it adds some subtle movement to your shots. As I've said with other features, if this is used correctly, it can look quite good. But I don't personally think this is something that I'll use all that much. So those are the main features that I wanted to highlight, but do I think the answer is worth it for content creators and filmmakers. The plugin provides a really easy way to get a pretty convincing film look from digital footage. As I mentioned before, I can't actually comment on the accuracy of the film profiles having never shot on film before, but what I can say is it produces a really pleasing filmic look, which is great if that's what you're looking for in a project you're working on. I particularly love the bloom effect, which can bring that beautiful, dreamy quality to your footage, whether you're trying to make it look like film or not. The plugin is really easy to get started with, but it can become quite complicated when you start delving into the different settings. However, this gives you the flexibility to really shape the look and intensity that you're going for, with the slider settings being there for each feature, so you can really dial the settings in that you're looking for. The main downside for me is performance when using this plugin which could be a real deal breaker for you. If you haven't got a particularly high-end editing machine, then this can really slow your playback down and make it quite choppy, which can be really frustrating, especially if you're trying to apply this to every single clip on your timeline. For context, my M1 Mac Mini with 16 GB of RAM slowed down to about 3 or 4 frames per second with the Hanser activated on a clip at full resolution. Bear in mind though that you can vastly improve the playback performance in DaVinci Resolve by just reducing the timeline settings to half or quarter resolution. And in some pretty unscientific testing, I discovered that render times really suffer too. I rendered out a 2 minute and 27 second timeline with various Dehancer features applied to each clip, 
and this took 9 minutes and 51 seconds on my Mac Mini. In comparison, the exact same timeline with the Dehancer node deactivated but with some basic colour grades on it actually rendered out in only 1 minute and 18 seconds. This means that applying the Dehancer effects actually caused the timeline render to take 7.6 times more than it would have without. I know this isn't scientific as it really depends on the different Dehancer features that you put on each clip but it kind of just hopefully gives you an idea of the potential impact this could have on your workflow. I noticed that the film profiles and film grain features seem to have the largest effect in slowing down performance, whereas using just Bloom, for example, didn't have anywhere near the same impact. Bear in mind that if you're using a pretty powerful M2 Pro or Max MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, for example, then your performance should be much better. I tried rendering out the same 2 minute and 27 second timeline on my work laptop, which is a 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and with the Dehancer activated, it rendered out in 4 minutes and 23 seconds, whereas with the Dehancer deactivated, it rendered out in only 1 minute and 1 second. Interestingly, this means that on the MacBook Pro, Dehancer actually only slowed down the render by about 4.3 times, rather than the 7.6 times that we got on the Mac Mini. Based on this, I suspect that the impact of using Dehancer in terms of how much longer a render will take compared to when it's not used will become less of an issue with the more GPU and CPU cores you have in your computer. Moving on to the price, and this plugin ain't cheap. The fully featured Dehancer Pro that I've been testing out comes in at $399. Although they do offer a single feature plugins such as Dehancer Bloom for only $99, which is quite good if you're only planning on using one of the features that is offered in Dehancer Pro, which makes this a bit more reasonable. There's also a Dehancer Lite version for half the price at $199 which removes some of the features from the Dehancer Pro version, but again, this might be all you need for your editing workflow. And regardless of which version of the plugin you get, you get access to the plugin on two separate devices. Overall, aside from those negatives I mentioned, from a purely visual output point of view, I'm pretty impressed with this plugin. I think I'll mainly use this for the film grain and bloom features because I think they fit into my editing style and can really add to certain shots. If you're interested in buying Dehancer Pro or any of the other versions of the plugin, then please visit the link in the description below and use the code Aaron P. Brown to get 10% off. A big thanks to Dehancer for letting me test out their plugin and it's something I'll definitely continue using in my editing workflow. But if you're interested in tech and camera gear, then you're in the right place. I'm going to put another video on screen right now that I'd recommend you check out next. Otherwise, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.